highly anticipated topic of tokens in the Latter-day Saint Temple Endowment. In the Temple Endowment ceremony, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints make sacred promises with God to live virtuous and Christ-centered lives. And part of making a covenant in the ancient world involved a deposition or a way to memorialize and remember the covenant. Latter-day Saints memorialize and certify their covenants with God through sacred symbols that we do not disclose outside of the temple. Brigham Young explained, let me give you a definition in brief. Your endowment is to receive all those ordinances in the house of the Lord, which are necessary for you after you have departed this life to enable you to walk back to the presence of the Father, passing the angels who stand as sentinels, being enabled to give them the keywords, the signs and tokens pertaining to the holy priesthood and gain your eternal exaltation in spite of earth and hell. The purpose of these sacred symbols is twofold, as I've already alluded to. The first one is as a way to help us remember or memorialize the covenant in very sacred ways. Second, Brigham Young made it clear that part of the purpose of these sacred symbols is to enable us to walk back into the presence of Heavenly Father and gain our eternal life. They serve as identifiers and authenticators. Symbols and tokens are just any object or action that can represent a broader concept. To set up a new phone, log into a new email, or sign up for a lot of apps today, you have to go through a two-step authentication process. When you enter your password, the app will text or email you a specific number or code that you have to input as well. This confirmation code is a token to ensure that you are the right person trying to sign into the account. The English word for symbol comes from an ancient Greek reference to knuckle bones. The Greek word symbolon could mean two halves of an object such as the knuckle bone of a goat or a sheep. Each contracting party would keep one half of the knuckle bone so that when the parties came together again, they could bring the pieces together and certify each other's identity. For example, a symbolon could be used for a guest in a home. A host might gift to a guest a symbolon or token so that they could recognize each other if they were ever to meet again. In Euripides' Medea, the protagonist Jason offers to send tokens on behalf of Medea so that when she arrived, she would be identified, recognized, and welcomed as a guest and friend of Jason. In 1832, Joseph Smith revealed section 88 of the Doctrine and Covenants, where the Lord gave instructions for how members of the School of the Prophets should address each other and identify each other. Let him offer himself in prayer upon his knees before God in token or remembrance of the everlasting covenant. And when any shall come in after him, let the teacher arise and with uplifted hands to heaven, yea, even directly salute his brother or brethren with these words. Art thou a brother or brethren? I salute you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in token or remembrance of the everlasting covenant, in which covenant I receive you to fellowship, in a determination that is fixed, immovable, and unchangeable. In the book of Exodus, God instituted the Passover as a way to memorialize how God's final plague passed over the Israelites who painted their lintels and doorposts with blood. Exodus 12 tells us that this action was a token or sign of God's promise. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, it shall pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. The blood on the doorposts was a way for the destroying angel to identify God's people as opposed to the Egyptians. And yes, blood is a pretty gruesome token, but the book of Moses teaches us that blood sacrifices can be likened to the atonement of Jesus Christ. After his resurrection, Jesus Christ used the nail prints in his hands and in his feet as tokens of identification for his disciples in both the old world and the new world. For example, in the gospel of John, Thomas Didymus said that he would not believe that Christ was really resurrected unless he could see for himself and feel the nail prints in his hands and feet. Jesus subsequently appeared and allowed Thomas to touch, see, and feel the nail marks in his hands. There may be symbols of Christ's sacrifice in our church worship and our temple worship that certify our identity as covenant children of God. Through reverencing symbols of Christ's sacrifice, we can identify him, learn more about him, and start to become more like him.